This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my midweek video for Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. I'm filming this Tuesday at 9.37 p.m. Sentiment came in a little bit after the little bump up into the Fed. Not so sure why people got excited into the Fed. I guess because the last Fed meeting, the market ran, but it is what it is, and sentiment came down a little bit. Powell did what we expected to pour a little cool water on the idea of the March rate cut. Now it seems the May rate cut may be in question. We'll get to that in a second, though. Uh, as far as the CNN gauge goes, also a little bit of a ease back. They had been into extreme greed, but people are still feeling pretty good. I guess the Kool-Aid is still going around. As far as the potential here for a Fed rate cut, I look, I had told you March was just not going to happen. Granted, uh, the probability did up a little bit today, but it is only 20%. This had been 64% plus a month ago. So yeah, as far as May goes, that has come in quite a bit also. The current level, apparently 34% think so. Uh, potential rate cut is at 54%. I guess they're still thinking it might happen, but it's not as much of a sure thing as maybe people would have been hoping. I worry that the May rate cut might be in jeopardy too, but uh, it seems like June is all but a done deal with people <laughs> producing a potential two uh, rate cuts. And I guess if they don't go in May, they'll do a 50 basis point cut in in June, I, I, you know, I don't know. Mester was out again today. She's, of course, the, um, what is she? She's from Cleveland, right? I was thinking Esther George for a second. She used to be from Kansas City, but then they swapped her out with Schmidt. And um, Herman Cain actually was a Kansas City Fed chief for a while, too. Anyway, we're off topic. Mester was from, she's the, the Cleveland Fed head, and we all know her as Mean Red. She had been cycled out, and she wasn't a voting member, but she is, she's back, baby. And uh, she's saying that, she doesn't really see the Fed cutting until it becomes a problem for their second mandate of employment. So I guess she wants to see the unemployment numbers get worse before they start cutting. So yeah, the hawkish uh, side of the Fed is back. Two year, uh, you know, bumped up a little, a little bit of an ease back here. But what I've been really watching is the 10 year and this is back over 4%. I would feel much more comfy with the idea of the rate cuts if this got back below 4%. So we'll leave it at that. We saw a big bump up. The three month has been a steady eddy right here, although this is starting to uptick a little bit. But the real movement had come from the six month. I think people were really buying into this uh, rate cut and it got down to 5.146. And now we're up pretty pretty sizably 5.27 this was even i think higher than that at one point i saw it at uh, 530 yeah it was 530 today so yeah that seems like one of those rate cuts might be coming off the table and potentially pushed out uh the economic data that uh, we need to pay attention to this week i would imagine obviously the petroleum report if you're a uh, crew trader but jobless claims i'm always keeping an eye on it's not that huge of a Weak consumer credit, you might want to keep a little eye on that. But Fed balance sheet, I, you know, I, I was going to say I'd be keeping more of a watch on that, but uh, eh, you know, not not such a big deal. We know we know that they're going to continue doing QT uh, for a while, and I, we expect them to make an announcement at the March meeting. So I guess they'll probably at that point lay out some type of a schedule to ease it back. I don't think they're going to cut it right off at March, but probably sometime in the summer and market will probably like that because they're not going to get their rate cut in March. Powell, um, interestingly, was on 60 Minutes and he was saying we're on an unsustainable path fiscally. So yeah, these, um, you know, we used to talk about trillion dollar deficits being, you know, problems. Now we're running $2 trillion. I mean, they normalize the COVID spending. That's a really, really big problem and a recipe for disaster. I think they're printing something like $8,000 a minute. <laughs> it's over. It's actually over 8,000. I did the math a while back. So it's, uh, it's pretty nuts. So VIX, we're down near the lower end of the range. We've seen this 1245 to 1268 areas acting as support. We are in a little bit of a mini accumulation funnel, but I'll tell you until they get this up over the 200 MA, call me skeptical. We've seen the attempts and we've seen them fail quite miserably. So I will assume any volatility that jumps up to the 200 MA and stays within this little channel 
is still just reference range. I'd even say up to 1557 is just, you know, running up the flagpole here. If they can break out from there, then, you know, we could get going. And, you know, I was looking at some stuff today. I was actually going to put on a trade for that uh, Snapchat or Snap crap after the bell for a short trade, and it went down pretty big. Um, they were going to do, you know, they're doing layoffs, but I wanted to do a put spread override because I don't mind owning it like around 10 or below in single digits, but there was just no juice in the puts. I'd have to like go out to December. You know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to bog my, you know, look, it's a small trade. It wouldn't really bog my account down, but I have to exercise discipline and I wound up not doing the trade because I didn't really like the, you know, the option setup. And it's been, look, it's been this case for longer than I expected that when puts are too cheap to sell, they're often just right to buy, but they have not been just right to buy. They've been just right to sort of melt away. That won't be the case, I think, for the whole year. I am expecting, you know, at least we'll get some kind of a 9 or 10% correction, at least a 5 to 10, I think, at some point this year. But uh, apparently, we're not there just yet. But we are starting to see some of the big names maybe get a little top-heavy, and we'll discuss that when we get to those charts. TLT, nice bounce off of a very barely interim trend level here that I sort of swung out and just used today's, I'm sorry, the prior day's low as a point. We got up to the 20 MA. Look, I, they've got to get over the 200 MA to really get me interested. We have not been able to sustain moves above there. We got into some resistance, but maybe from a higher low, they could make a run at it. So yeah, we've got to see this clear and stay over 95, 96 and falling. But uh, yeah, that needs to clear for us to feel comfortable owning the TLT. Or we have to wait for 91s. As far as TNX goes, this is interesting. This had done a pretty nasty dumpster dive now has a incrementally higher low, bounced into the channel, and now seemingly holding the 20 MA. So until we break 4071, and until I see the overall 10-year rate below 4%, I will assume this is sideways to higher. Um, once we see that break, then I could think we could see sideways to lower. But if we do keep running, and we clear, can clear these 4190 to 4223, we could make a run back up to 43.33, which is the real jump off point. If that fails, it's still sort of okay, but if it clears, uh, you know what's gonna hit the fan. Same thing with the dollar. I had told you we we're sort of in the stair step mode. We did the stair here, we did another stair here, and now we did the step up and now consolidating. Are pulling back a little, but I don't really see much relief until we get below 103.817, which is of course the 123 high. We are now back into an old channel. I'm not really making that much of it. I probably could even delete it at this point, but I guess I will, actually. I don't really think it's that relevant for us at the moment. But we, th I think the horizontal levels are this 104.636 to 105.01. We got just up to there and basically a two times range of this consolidation and the inverted head and shoulders bottom that I had pointed out. And I had said anything over the 20 MA, I'd rather be long than short. And sure enough, here we are. So... What now? Well, if we could clear this zone, I think the market will start noticing the dollar again, and we could go up to 105.897, and uh, then, you know, we'll have to see, but did we just kind of punch up and are we going to chop around? It, that could be the case. We may just be stair-stepping our way higher, but uh, I think that treasury refunding kind of got this last leg going. That Yellen said that, first of all, they're doing all kinds of chicanery. They can't sell the long-dated treasuries without putting the interest rate up on themselves. And with QT going on, that's just like the double whammy. So I think the, the true situation here is that the Fed and the Treasury, I think they're colluding, but at least the Treasury, they're saying they're going to do less um, debt issuance. That's obviously showing some fiscal responsibility and bullish for the dollar. And then they're doing more short dated treasuries, which is giving the long end a little bit of relief in some regard, because if they keep trying to fund those and they can't get those auctions off, the rate goes up and up and up. And then, you know, we start talking about the bond vigilantes and all that stuff. So 100 MA, long story short, 100 MA has basically stalled it. We're stalled at a horizontal level. If we start clearing the 100 MA at 104.325, you don't want to be short. You probably want to be long. Uh, we could pull back to 103.817 and still be all right. I mean, I'd even argue we could pull back to the 200 MA at 103.526 area and still sort of be all right. It would be a midpoint test of the range. But at that point, if it did really start rallying, you'd 
you know, really have have real problems. Bitcoin, uh, the stronger dollar probably doesn't help Bitcoin, but Bitcoin sort of a cult, a bit of its own uh, situation going. It's got a clear 43,675 plus and hold. I think you could currently, look, if you're already long, don't let it get below the, at least the 20 MA at 42,597, or I should say max 20 MA. If you want to use the 50 MA, that's fine too at 42,710. That's sort of just dealer's choice. But anything below there could see a larger pullback. We do seem to be consolidating though, and that I guess is incrementally more bullish than bearish. Mm, Coinbase. I had said I thought we would come back down to this 109.21 to 114. What is this? 15-ish area? 13-ish area? Yeah, 104.13. And wait, 104. 43. I was gonna say that looked like that didn't look like a one to me. So that 109, 109.21 to 114.43, and we got close. That was the, I should have just looked left to the 61.8. Ugh, genius. 115. Um, so this area, we've, we're kind of consolidating just above. A, I, I, I would say the 20 MA is going to remain resistance until it proves otherwise. So yeah, we could run it back up 10, 10 bucks. If you're long, don't let it get below, let's say, say 115 on you. If we do keep pulling back and we do the full Monty down to channel low, we could retest 87s, which is a big breakout and channel low. Somewhere between the 200 MA and that low, I'd get interested in buying. I'm not so sure how we're going to react on earnings, but I will tell you this, if you're long and you're kind of underwater, if we do bounce up to channel high, I'd be a seller because I think we're going to respect the channel now. We broke out of the channel, checked back to the top side of it, lower high, broke back into it technically here. We should have come up to it and we didn't. So am I going to you know, make a big deal over a few days and maybe a little bit of a leg lower? Eh, not really, but technically, quote unquote, we should come up there. If we don't, I think that's even more telling of how weak crypto is and we could make a move lower if you want to do some kind of spread or ratio, smaller size, because of course, IV being low and you don't want to have your gammas and your vegas going against you. Gold uh, seems to be holding the 20 MA, so I guess that's your stop, 187.91. It's really got to clear this 189.64 to 189.99-ish area. And even then, then we're still running into trouble at 191.36. My guess, and this is just pure speculation, is we're going to get some kind of a big up day like this. It could even just happen on a gap, and it will be like that move that doesn't really let anyone in. And it may sputter or whatever after that, but that that to me would be the signal that it's kind of a go with. So wait for one of these sort of big body candles if you're a Momo chaser and then go with. If you want to take it here at the flood, so to speak, just use the 20 MA as your stop. Oil. We got the channel low and we're bouncing. So we are over the 50 MA. So great. Stop. 7336. If this keeps on running, are we going to make our way all the way back up to the channel high here in 79s or 80s by the time it takes to get there? Eh, we'll see. Um, 76.18 to 77.59 has been some trouble, and the 200 MA kind of has been a, you know, a nightmare. We haven't really been able to get over it and sustain it for very long. So that's probably a trim area if you're swinging it. Okay. XLE. The 100 MA is that nemesis here, and we got very close to the 200 MA in the channel. I'm sort of wondering if we're going to put in an inverted head and shoulders. Uh, the last time we saw that formation, it just kind of coll collapsed here. We saw it, and then now we made a lower you know, low, and we reset. So again, I, I really did need to see it over the trend line and over the 100 MA. Oil and oil related, any commodity or commodity related stocks is always best to own in the direction of the trend or short in the direction of the trend. So this is still in a downtrend, but it is threatening to make a move higher. If you're, if you're long, you know, just don't let it get below the 20 MA, 82.32 tops. FXI, we, um, we haven't talked about that in a while. Actually, let's talk XBI first since uh, you know we're doing the ETFs. This has a little bit of a mini breakout. If you want to be long, I'm cool with that. Just don't let it get below 88.66 on you, which is, of course, the 10 MA. Um, I'm pretty much, I don't want to be a broken record with 10 and 20 MAs, but yeah. Anyway, the 90.91 to 92.02 area is a potential resistance. 
I think it would overshoot probably to the backside of the old up funnel. And we could see a move into the 9320-ish area. So that's probably a trim zone, but looking a little better here, right? FXI, we'll get some quick answers on this uh, after Baba in the morning, I believe. Uh, it is over the 10 and 20 MA. We are running into some potential 50 MA resistance. It's an ADR, so it trades in gaps. It's a little less powerful than it would be if it weren't. But we did have a confluence of channel lows down here, and we now have a potential higher low. We just now need to see if we can make an incremental higher high. We're sort of right up against the resistance. So uh, I guess it's uh, up to <laughs> Alibaba, a lonely ETF turns its eyes to you. So this is very key here. If it does keep going, the 100 MA has been the next big resistance and probably where we could go, 2477. Uh, KWeb had made some new lows also, but also, well, not new lows, meaning, you know, we're not past the crash lows down here, but it did make some incremental new lows and now now a nice gap over trend and over the 20 MA. So I'll tell you what, if you want to be long KWeb 2421, uh, if you want to use that, or I'll tell you what, if you want to just use candle body low here, 2442, that's fine. And I'd probably also be targeting somewhere near channel high. So somewhere between the 100 MA, 2649 and 2726, 2727, depending on how long it takes to get there. Uh, I guess we'll talk Baba. Da Baba. So nice inverted head and shoulders. We're right up to a neckline. Whenever something's white like this, when it should be cloudy, you know I did the work on mobile. Little pro tip. So we're right up to 7777. And I guess we could just use that as the neckline. So we'll know on earnings. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail now. And if not, it will probably be a gap and go up to at least the 200 MA. This is a volume distribution zone, so probably 85.57 you want to trim some into. But if that can ultimately clear, there's not much in the way of going up to 88s, which is, of course, a lucky number in China. I know because I had a Chinese girlfriend for many years, and eights, the eights are a big deal. So don't just assume we'll go we'll shoot through it usually you get to a volume distribution you'll back off a little and then it could go but you know i wouldn't i wouldn't rule anything out if they put any you know if they put in anything um that's extraordinary so yeah the, the check the technical pattern here looks bullish but you know earnings so they've got to they've got to do do the work i'm going to pull up spy but of course we're going to talk about es and nq because of course i have some key levels to discuss with you. And I think it's actually a lot more simple than the geniuses on TV want to admit. Anything over 45, 40, sorry, 49, 57 quarter, I remain more bullish than bearish. We were holding that the last couple of days. Back below there now, I think you got problems. And it'll probably line up with the 200 MA 30 minute by the time you get there and this trend. We've now seemingly broke the triangle to the upside. Uh, I think you could raise your stops to 49.77 half. I'd trim a little here, but you're probably watching this in the, um, it's already 9.55, so it could be after midnight. If we clear there, we'll probably reach test and get close to the 5,000 level. So if we redrew this as a channel, and I'm not so sure that that's, you know, I don't want to say I'm being lazy, but I think that this could be the formation of a new up channel. We could see a move up to 50.27s if it happened on the open. And if we do have that happen on the open, it's probably something you want to sell into. I think 5,000 roughly is going to be a while to get through. Like 4,000 took some time. I think 5,000, you know, the big numbers tend to take some time. So yeah. Um, and, and then if we were to pull back and we weren't able to hold 49.57 quarter, I think we'd have a liquidation break probably not only to the prior day's low at 49.37.75, but the next big key support zone from 49.26 half to 49.33 quarter. And then that really becomes a must hold because if we lose that, I think the market's in much deeper trouble. The Qs, similar situation, but they have not been able to clear this 17,752 to 17,793 half. But they've also roughly, with a couple of little skirmishes below, below's, been able to hold 17,585 to 17,632. And you remember from a couple of Fridays ago, this is when we had ended the one time framing, and I had said that this area was the must clear and hold. So I'm more, I'd say neutral to bullish here. I know, I know it looks like an inverted head and shoulders, and 
for all intents and purposes, the neckline of that resistance zone serves that purpose, but I don't pay as much attention to inverted head and shoulders when it's at the top end of a range as I would on the lower end of a range because it's a bottoming pattern and you can't bottom at the top, you know, <laughs> you know I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. Although in this uh, crazy world, you never know. So if you're currently long, I wouldn't feel comfortable below 17,632 at this point. And if we lost this zone, I think it's an outright short, probably to the lower part of the zone. I would think at least 17,409 half to 17,457 half, and maybe even a retest of some, you know, Fed day lows. Um, so we're caught between two ranges. And I think that We've seen a move below that hasn't um, didn't stick, so my guess is we're going to see a move to the upper part of it, and we'll see if that f sticks. If not, we could fail and then come back into range, and maybe we're just in this range for a while. SPY. We had a very, very large move up here on Friday. Then Monday was an inside doji, the dubstep, and now we have a dubstep within the dubstep. But we are technically um, still fine, I think if you want to use blow of day now, if you're long as a raise stop, 492.05, that's fine. I'd really, frankly, only get super bearish if we were to lose the 10MA, 489.60. Um, I've told you before, pullbacks when you're in an up move to 10MAs are still fine. If we lose that, we'd probably come down to the 20MA at 483.69. So if you want to do some kind of short play, maybe buy 490, sell 480, and then with an overwrite down near like 460 somethings, you know, 466s or 460, actually, because that was a big breakout area. If you want to go longer dated, I'm very cool with a setup like that. Now on the upside, if we do clear, um, we can clear 495s, we'll probably go to 500. Could we get all the way up to 505 or 510 even? It, it gets it's possible. Um, but I, like I said, I do think that roughly that 500-ish area, give or take a few points, is going to be some resistance. And there'll probably be some sellers. We are, over, we are overbought. I mean, it's not egregiously overbought, but the market is a little overbought. And we are seeing the breath narrow. I mean, it's really just a few stocks carrying things at this point. But they are the big Momo stocks. And We'll have to see if we do get the broadening out or not. The expected move into the end of the week, Friday OPEX, is $4.56. So not gigantic, but, you know, significant. DIA. Consolidating with the 10MA, I, we are technically still one time framing to the downside, but if we were to just burst over the 385.37 level, it technically would end for one period. I don't really view this as more than anything more than just a consolidation up near the channel high and reference highs. If we clear, we could get ourselves up to 389.47, which would probably tie in with the, I mean, it is the 2.618 and maybe an overshoot to 390s. But below the 10MA, if you want to be aggressive below 383 half and then press it on a move below the 10MA at 382.90, because we just tested there a couple times, then, you know, maybe we get a move down to. 379.66 and then the breakout at 377.82 if you want to do something targeting channel low longer dated buy 380 or th even here just buy at 385 sell 375 and then sell 365 i may actually fill that um tomorrow i have to take a look and see what i could get because the iv is just so low it's just pathetic Caterpillar, uh, speaking of uh, Dow stocks, I'm just curious to see. That now joined the Channel High Club, but it backed off pretty hard. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably be a seller into Strength and Cat. I mean, this came up from below Channel Low and pretty much got up here. So, yep, Cat, probably a good time to sell into. Doesn't mean it has to go down right away. It's very possible we pull back and then, you know, cons or consolidate. But it's, it's to me, it's, t it's time. <laughs> I just was uh, watching on YouTube uh, some clips from Joe Black. Meet Joe Black with Brad Pitt and um, Anthony Hopkins, actually. Great movie. Um, it's time. So anything over 214.24 in Boeing, I think, could run. Basically, we got to clear the 200 MA. I'd love to see another leg lower down to 188s or even retest to 176s. I have to tell you, the other day I was talking with the girlfriend. She's um, been in the sixth borough in florida so we are considering and 
aggressive i shouldn't say aggressively but looking into moving new york is just just it's just over so i think i and i asked her i said um you know we were looking at flights i was like do you know what plane you're flying on and she's like why do you ask i'm like if you have the choice between a boeing or an airbus i would probably fly on the airbus and i frankly have flown both planes airbus i'm sorry i hate to admit it they make a better plane I know, I know, but I mean, look, if we're being honest, Europeans make better cars too, okay? Uh, I know, blasphemy, but, you know, Mercedes, BMW, these aren't domestic cars. Uh, yeah, Tesla, I get it, but, you know, Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, you know, I could keep going. So, uh, yeah, Boeing, I mean, they're lucky, they have, they have good military contracts, and, you know, it's sort of a duopoly. I know China is going to come online in a few years, but there'll be restrictions on those planes for sure. Uh, I got to see it over the 200 MA or I got to see it lower. Okay. Very, very simple. Long story short, IBM. This also kind of did a moonshot. It just shot past the 2017 high and it's promptly been pulling back. It's below the 10 MA. It's below the earnings day high at one or earnings day low at 184.83. Could this just keep sinking back? I mean, I'd love if this came down to the 50 MA. I don't know that that's going to be the case. I'm guessing the 20 MA, if it keeps pulling back, could be a day trade by the dip at 175.87, but I am watching this because we did get an interim channel high and, um, you know, I could we pull back just to the prior channel? Mm, yeah, that, or I should say we got the extreme channel high and we could pull back to the interim channel high, which is the yellow channel as opposed to the magenta one. We had a green one that became a yellow one that became a magenta one. So. Yeah, it's, it's overbought. And I think they're just, you know, finding sellers. I mean, you know, these have been like blow off type moves at post earnings. IWM. So it technically ended the one time framing today with a higher low. So this looks, I guess, incrementally bullish. It broke the downtrend. Could we um, just be forming a pennant here? Ignore this uh, trend line for the moment. But or channel, I should say, for the moment. Could we pop up to channel high? It's possible, and we could just chop in this pennant for a while. I have a play on that would benefit for a move, and I put it on super cheap, that would benefit for a move down to the 200 MA. I haven't taken it off because it's just up a little bit. So, um, yep, uh, technically you could end the one time framing for one time period, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, got a hold here above the 50 MA. Anything below could get dicey, but you know this has things to contend with, things like the KRE. By the way, the expected move in the DIA was $3.43. Expected move in IWM is $3.46. This has to deal with things like the KRE, which is just you know crap. These are the crappy banks, and this looks like it's rolling over, actually. So if KRE keeps dumping, it's probably going to weigh on IWM. And could KRE get all the way down to 39s? We'll see. I mean, I'm not going to assume end ranges, but it's well below the 20 and the 50 MA here. It didn't have a nice reaction today. So, yeah, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd be careful. If anything's going to lead the way lower, it's probably going to be first IWM because that's the, sort of the, you know, the weakest um, of all of these. We got the two times range. We are holding the 10 MA, but like sort of with... Dragon mini dojis at the higher end of the range. I mean, could we pop out and get ourselves up to 141s? It's possible. It, I'm not going to say it's not because we have seen things move over channels and then we could be into a magenta channel, but I'll just keep it simple. Below the 10 MA, I think we see the 20 MA at 419s. And if we lose that, I think we see the 50 MA at 406.91 and rising. That probably will line up with the 408.71, which was the 1122.21 reference high pre collapse. And maybe the recent breakout here, which was over the 1228 high at 1292, or I should say 41292. So that zone could be a, a buy the dip. That's an interim channel low. I mean, if we went to the extreme channel low, you're talking about closer to the 200 MA. So if you want to put on some kind of a hedge, maybe buy 420, sell 400 or 395, and then with an overwrite somewhere down around 375. I think I have something like that on already, but I may, I may re-up it. We'll see if we um, start losing you know, some of the big stocks like the, in the SMH. This is um, finding resistance near the two times range. It has held the 10 MA. I'm gonna put an alert below the low of day here at 190.12, because if that breaks, I wouldn't mind 
trying it right or right out short. So last, outer, below, and I'll say row, row, short. Uh, could we, I mean, it, it, I probably would just pull back to the 20 MA and maybe channel low. Could we just retest and fill the gap to the 50 MA? I think the 50 MA and this gap fill is probably initial by the dip at 174.64. So if you're doing short dated options plays, you could buy 10 MA, sell 20 MA, and then an overwrite with a short the 50 MA or something a little below. I wouldn't, I, I, around 169 or so. Do I ultimately think on a larger correction we could pull back and retest the 165s? I mean, maybe, but I think it's going to require some kind of a catalyst. We'll get one at some point, but apparently not yet. NVIDIA, this got over 700 in the pre-market. I think it got 709 I saw. Let's see, two-day, five-minute, yep, 709s. And then it bounced and stalled at the channel, and then we just dump a root. I think there were interested, motivated sellers. And once they saw 700 couldn't hold, it pulled back. We didn't even get the 10 MA, all right? We did have a technical look below and fail the prior day's low, but I'm not making much of it. Listen, we're near that. We're at the channel high club here for NVIDIA. It's probably a good area to trim profits into. I mean, could this just keep riding higher? It's possible. Money flow is already starting to fall out a little. And I would imagine that there's probably some interested parties, you know, to book some profits ahead of their earnings. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be good, but we're coming in on the highs after coming right up from the channel low. So yeah, uh, I mean, just even a pullback to the interim channel here it wouldn't be that bearish. I mean, it's just basically a 10, 20 MA check back. So um, yeah, if you're going to do some kind of a put spread or ratio 50 MA as a lower strike, or below there, um, you know, around 500. Yeah, I mean, that's really where we took off from, so we should find some key support there. I would think coming from highs like this, it would be a, a great buy. Avago. All right, so we now technically have a lower high. We are still holding the 10 MA, and um, do we have a key reversal here right at the channel? It's possible. Uh, I'll just tell you, don't if you're long, uh, you know, don't let it get below 12, 18, 48. If you want to use low of day at um, 12, 11, 94, that's fine. I'd be even more worried if we had a o up open to the channel and then came down and took it out. I think that would be a screaming short with a stop over whatever the lower high is. So keep that on my, on on deck. AMD. Uh, pulling back, we're right on the 20 MA below the 10 MA, so do or die here at the 20 MA. If not, we could pull back to trend at 154-ish, depending on how long it took to get there, and maybe an overshoot to the 50 MA. So, yep, 20 MA, better hold here. This was the old channel high. I, we traded below it. We're now a little had traded above it, but we technically do have a lower high here. We haven't made a new low yet, so it's not quite in a downtrend. But it really better hold 162.56 because if it doesn't, um, you know, we could have a problem. Could this just consolidate here for a bit and bull flag? Also very possible. SMCI, wow, this thing, oh man, talk about an intraday reversal and then closed at a new, <laughs> closed at a new high. Oh, this thing is just unbelievable. So it was asking me today if I was going to short this when it was down. I was like, uh, and then now nah. I was sort of like ghosted them. I'm like, that, that, that's got, you know, it's not that I don't have the stones for these kind of trades. If anyone does, I sure do. But um, not yet. Not yet. Um, could this get the 4.236? That would be something. Uh, I'll tell you what I, I will do. If we have a lower high tomorrow and then take out today's low, 625.81, then I've got the stones because we I think we could have a potential secure high. Does it mean, the, is it guaranteed because JP is going to take the trade, it's going to work? No, it certainly doesn't. I get stopped out a lot on trades. Um, but, you know, you, you never know until you bet. That's an old Jesse Livermore saying. So, uh, which I think he got from Mr. Partridge, old turkey. Uh, you never know till you bet. So we got to get, I actually have to re-listen re to that. I have it on audiobook. It's rather entertaining. If you've never re read, read Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, get on it. Um, so if we have a lower high tomorrow and then take out the low, I think we could see a short at least to the 10 MA. Um, I would think at least 565, maybe even a move back down to 485.74. I mean, we were just there a few days ago. So, But impressive, very impressive. Microsoft. 
the AI play, um, these things have just been unbelievable. We're, we got, I think this day's range is very defining the earnings day range. So I'll tell you, if I were looking for a new money long, I'd feel much better over 415.32. And if I were looking for a short, I'd feel much better below 397.21, which would take you below the 20 MA. Uh, we're just, we now have a bit of a lower high. I'll, I'll tell you, if you're aggressive, 407.97 would be a good stop on a short. We got really close to another 2.618. I think these things just need some cooling off. Could it pull back to the 50 MA if you want, if you're long and you want to put on some kind of hedge? Buy like five, 400 puts, sell, you know, 385. And then if you want to overwrite it, maybe sell 360 somethings, you know, or 350 somethings if you're going longer dated. Moving right along. Adobe, this is another AI play, also software for a service. It, I said I thought booking channel high was key, and then I said the 10MA was the must hold. We broke that. We're now down to a very key zone between the 50MA and this 608.63. If this keeps going, I mean, we could pull back a lot. 563s, maybe even a move back down to the 552s. But no need to own this up here until we can clear the 10MA. Uh, does it mean it's definitely going lower? I mean, we've seen moves like this, and then it rally back up to the 20MA, so... What would be interest to me is if we dumped and then rallied to the 20 MA and then that became the short. I mean, that seems to be the playbook here. So, but it, it today looked like a decent reversal. I'd be a little careful. We're still up a lot and up into channel high. If you didn't book any of this, I would uh, you use an up open if we got one to do so. Hand W shifting to the other leg of the uh, stool here of the trifecta that's holding the market up. AI semis which are sort of one in the same lately and of course cybersecurity. um just looks choppy to me i i have no idea what this is going to do on their earnings obviously i don't have a crystal ball it still looks bullish uh we're consolidating above the channel if you break below the channel um i mean we did it here and then rode the channel for a while before dumping but uh, it's got to break the 20 ma and it's got to break below the channel low i think the 20 ma would suffice for me, as a stop, 335.71. So, yeah, don't let it get below there on you. Apple, this has been acting better. I've heard good reviews from the Vision Pro, and have, we've all seen these pictures of people walking around in public. Look, if you're not Casey Neistat, uh, you're not, you don't have that cool level to do it. All right, I'm just, just telling you. Uh, we're right up on some resistance. I had thought that this 190-ish um, to 191 would be some resistance at the 50MA. Probably is. I would even book a little here if you bought the dip. We technically did have a look below and fail. So the stock really should go higher, maybe even to 195s. But uh, this 189, 190, 191 area, that is probably going to be a little bit of resistance short term. Um, if you want to, I'll tell you, if it pulls back and you want to buy the dip, maybe 187s, 186 somethings, but don't let it get much below there on you. But I, I like the Apple story. I just worry about China and, you know, the slowing growth there. Google, uh, we had talked about pulling the ripcord at the old reference high and the channel high, and that turned out to be prescient. We pulled back, we held the 100 MA, we now bounced to the 50% Fib and 20 MA. If you bought the dip, probably a good area to trim into if it does keep going. The 10MA is probably the next key support level, I mean the key resistance level. I was looking for a full retest of channel low, so unfortunately I did not catch this bounce. Um, we did do well up here though with those sales, but uh, down here I'd like a little lower. So um, yeah, um, I'm just sort of observing. But if you are long, 141.22, um, as long as that holds, it's sort of okay. So that's the big pass, don't pass line. Uh, I don't think I would use the 50 MA anymore. I'd move it up to 141.22. And I'll tell you what, to make it um, clear, let's make that now red. That's the uh, must hold or die zone. <laughs> Meta, they're getting some sellers after this sort of monster move. It looks a lot like IBM, actually, where it's just now it's one time framing to the downside. So very simple. If you want to buy it, buy it lower, probably the 10MA or the 20MA, wherever it is at the time. If not, wait for it to break a prior day's high to at least, at least end the one time framing. okay? So um, it's right on the earnings day low. If that breaks, we could see some more liquidation. I don't think it's going to give up the full gap, 
but I don't know that it's not going to give up some and maybe get the 10 MA. So it could chop for a while too, and that 10 MA could come to it. Amazon, this was also a big up move. We got into some resistance. We're actually above the channel. This looks like it's consolidating very nicely though. Um, I'll tell you, if you're long, just use 167.33, which was the 22.2 low as a stop. Anything that clears that high at 172.51 could make a move back up to 188. So it seems like it wants to do that because um, the selling here is really not materialized. And I think this move caught people a little bit by surprise. We are over the 78.6. So it, it, the, Amazon looks better out of all of these if you want to kind of play chase it. Walmart, will it get the green channel high? We are at reference highs and we did technically have a mini look below and fail. I mean, look above and fail. And I had said I wouldn't make that much of it. We had a move up today. A good race stop is 168.34. They are going to have earnings and then the three for one split. So, yeah, I mean, this could this could keep going, um, but it's really got to clear and hold over 170, 169.94. Uh, if it has a pullback before earnings, I don't know why I have the 200 MA listed. It uh, should be the 20 MA. You know what? I was probably intraday is my guess with that, and it was a um, intraday 200 MA. That's the only explanation I could see because I would never make that big of a mistake with the color and it being at the 20 MA. So, yeah, I'm actually I'm sure that's what happened. But we are near a yellow channel high. I'd trim a little, but I think it's going to remain strong into the split. Costco getting very close to um, the 2.618 at 723.92. You do have some dojis here. 20 MA is kind of channel low. Believe it or not, pullbacks to the 20 MA, I think are still all right. 69018 and rising. I'd probably use 704. I wouldn't let this get below 700 on me. How's that? Um, how's that for compromise? If you want to give it a little room to the 10 MA, that's all right. But I, I'd be trimming. You know, the risk reward is starting to get a little stretched. Netflix rolling over a little here. We had talked about this zone being some resistance. I still like being a seller into Netflix. It still could rally. There's all kinds of stuff going on with companies trying to launch competitors, but uh, 568.08 to 593.29 is big reference resistance. Still like trimming profits here. And this is also a progression line. So good area to sell into. Spotify. I don't know why Netflix and Spotify haven't either merged or Netflix hasn't put out a competitor. Uh, this was a big gap up and flop, but it's, I'll tell you, it's got to hold 228-ish, this 228.11 area to 211.10. If that can't hold on the pullback, I think it's got a lot bigger pullback coming, but considering this was now an earnings day range, yeah, uh, it's got to hold. If it doesn't, uh, I think we just keep sinking down probably to that 211 area. So if it bounces here, it may just need a few days of consolidation. I'll probably put an alert here over... The earnings day high, 248.67. So 248.68. And I'll say row, row long, particularly after it consolidates for a few days. But if it doesn't, you know, if it, ever, if it doesn't trigger, no harm, no foul. Tesla, this is starting to get a little interesting off the 61.8. Potential secure low. I'll tell you what, anything over 184.68, I think you could try long. If it clears the 10 MA, I think we could get the 20 MA. So um, maybe Tesla gets a little bit of a bounce. It is oversold. It is finding some buyers. Um, this was my kind of downside target. So we're here at the channel low. So I, I don't see the need right now to press it. Um, Ford was up. <laughs> F up. Um uh, I was looking at Ford. I, 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 I'll just say this. It's got to hold the 200 MA. If it does not and it comes back below, it's a short. So 1215 above could see 12 half, maybe 1291, but don't let it get below the 200 MA or it's a short. Uh, Rivian. I was really hoping this was going to keep dumping, and it may, um, into the earnings. I'd love it down near channel low for just a call spread for a check back to like the 200 MA, maybe 18s. But um, it is consolidating around these 15s, which is support. So maybe it does get a run up into the number and then it's uh, own it for the bounce, but not for the actual numbers. Chipotle, 
my god uh this stock is something else uh it's up pretty big it's getting very close to the two times range and channel high that we had talked about so why why not why can't this join the channel high club the maybe it's got 2600 or 2578 written on it um it's bullish that's all i have to say i don't know why they haven't split the stock they uh, just love letting these things run this had a rough channel for a while but we traded on either end of it yeah i would just you know if you have some orders pepper them out maybe a little bit ahead of the two times range and at the two times range lily um so my contention on this was that if novo nordisk was up lily might struggle but it made a new high they sold it off makes some sense sell the news uh, that happened a little with novo so let's give this a few days to um play out but i'd, I'd be a buyer of this lower particularly if there's a larger sell-off to the 100 ma that's been trend and been key support so up here i, I still like trimming into but uh, man the, these stocks they have so much um, potential with these weight loss drugs we'll we'll see novo we had played this for the channel high it's actually catching itself you have a two-day range here it may become a multi-day range uh, if you're long 116.66 is the must hold anything below 116.27 it could be a short uh, again also the 100 ma is key support down near 100 bucks i got out on the earnings pop um it did pull back but it is now a little higher I, look i was in options plays i was long call spreads and short put spreads so i was just playing for channel high you know i'm not an investor i'm the catch the meat of the move guy so often we do catch the dead lows and the dead highs but you know that's not just to be expected as you know the base case scenario uh palantir this is interesting it's uh, could this eventually get up to 30 bucks it's possible but shorter term we are into some resistance here um i think this could get up to the gap fill here maybe 24s 24 25 to 25 42 i would probably trim a little here if you've been long but I i'm thinking it probably has a little bit more to go um i think you could raise your stop now to 2080 don't let it get below there on you that's the 382 if it can clear and stay over the 382 the 50 percent fib would be the 2542 but they've got good things going on it's amazing to me how, i mean this was 45 dollars at one time and it got down to five dollars and change so a lot of people sat through a lot of you know what with this this was remember those ipos that all ran up and uh, it to me this just looks like a big accumulation funnel it wouldn't even surprise me to see it come back down at some point but um eventually this will probably see higher prices so i would be um i don't know that you need to chase it but i'd be a dip buyer lower uh deckers this is selling off a little bit this was just unbelievable um, that move it had the other day and we're now one time framing to the downside um, if you want to chase it for still higher wait for it to get over a prior day's high we got very close to the two times range so um did we we may have actually even gotten it in the um in the overnight i don't think we did um not gonna be able to see that in the two day well I... no um all right no big deal so yeah with deckers this thing just looks like it blew its brains out i'd probably be a seller um into bounces but it, w it would not surprise me to see this uh catch itself maybe on the 10 ma for a day trade or the 20 ma so stay frosty because the 10 ma here caught it the last time so 791 31 could be maybe even a scalp trade i think we could end it there it's a midweek video we don't want to go too long have a great rest of your week i'll see you late night friday early morning saturday cheers